Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Video four in the series on loading for this seven millimeter PRC. Today, we're not gonna do any bench time. All the ammo is already loaded and ready to go. It was supposed to be a bracket between four different powders with this same bullet, the 195 grain Burger Elite Hunter Extreme Outer Limit bullet. What I ended up doing was going through some research on LRT because I had my suspicions about burnout prior to uh, muzzle passage or muzzle exit. And as it turns out, LRT does not burn 100%. As a matter of fact, in all the modeling I did on Gordon's reloading tool, I got anywhere between 84 and 91% burn. Totally unacceptable. What's odd is that I got it to shoot good groups a couple few times. So it's a little disappointing, but I just removed it altogether from our loadings. It makes no sense to utilize a powder that's not going to get a complete burn. That's just one more inconsistency that I don't want in my loadings. So in this video, the competitions between the Hodgen H1000, Hodgen Rotumbo, and the Vitivori N570. And that's where we stand. What I did was selected the best charge weights from each of those three powders and then loaded nine of each. And then a whole bunch of others for cider follower and just to plink around. I, I want to shoot the brass so it's consistently three times fired, four times fired, five times fired. In loading for it this time, I stumbled upon a situation I didn't realize I was having. Last time around, I changed bullet lot numbers. And when I did, there was a difference in the seating depth to get the correct overall length. So I had to seat them a little bit deeper. Well, I noticed when I was on the range, a couple of them actually were scraping the front of that magazine. And I wasn't a big fan of that. In a hunting situation, that could be a bad deal. So I decided I'd bump them back two more thousands. And then in a future video, I'm going to be going into that magazine with either a uh, sanding dowel or a Dremel with a real light paper on it. And I'm going to try to get another thousandth or two out of the front of that mag where it doesn't appear that it needs to be as heavy as it is, as odd as that sounds, uh, dealing with plastic. I want to relieve just a little bit out of it. I'd like to have four or five thousandths between the point of the bullet, the tip of the bullet, and the front of that magazine. For hunting situation, I think it's uh, vital to have guaranteed function, and I want to have that space so that there's no way we can have a bullet hang up on its point. So for this test, because I'm going to be bumping them back for hunting condition anyway, there's no sense in loading anything but what I want to utilize on this hunt with this rifle. I decided to bump those back an additional two thousandths cartridge base to ogive length. So our jump went from 0.034 to 0 0.036. So 36 thousandths is our jump now, give or take. A couple of them, maybe 36 and a half. Uh, all very close to 36 thousandths. I had to do that to accommodate, like I said, my space requirement for the magazine. I didn't realize I was that close last time. Apparently the couple that I measured, well, they were just on the shorter side and they fit no problem. And then as I went through the day, last video, I discovered that I had a couple that were touching or rubbing it on the way up and I didn't like it. So nothing else to really talk about. No irregularities. Uh, this brass has been obviously deep primed, cleaned, dried, annealed, full length sized, neck set out with a mandrel, or you could say neck sized with a mandrel, primed with BR2, CCI BR2 primers, and then loaded with the following charge weights in each powder. So predictions. I think that N570 is probably going to be our winner, but here's a problem that I see developing. I think our speeds are going to change some because I've altered the seating depth and I don't know by how much. And if I model it in Gordon's reloading tool, the data doesn't seem to line up with what I've done so far. So I really have a hard time trusting that all of the data lines up with how my bore chamber are. So I say that to say, I don't know, are these going to get faster? Or are they going to get slower? Typically, they'd get faster because you've got less space for powder now, so you're going to have a, a more rapid pressure spike. But this is all assumption on my part. I honestly don't know. It'll be interesting. I hope that my velocity is still in the plateaus where they were making good groups. That's what I really hope for here. I hope I didn't lose a whole bunch of velocity, and I also hope I didn't gain a bunch. We're going to find out together. I'm not sure where we're going to end up. 
Anyhow, that's enough. Not a lot of yammering today. No bench work time. Not worth doing. The next video, obviously, is going to be on to the uh, Hammer Hunter tipped 162 grains, which I've got sitting on the bench there. So that's it for now. Take them to the range. Make them fly straight. Okay, standard procedure. We've got a target camera and our shot marker up and running. The first three groups you see there on the paper are for fouling only. Each one of those is a lower charge weight than the weights we're actually firing of each of these powders, but there is one representing each powder there, the N570 in the center. Okay, so back on the bench, have a look at this brass. Not much to see. There are a few pieces that are polished pretty good, and there are a couple of really faint ejector marks on them. In H1000 and Rotumbo, we were well over pressure due to our seating depth change. It definitely wasn't weather. Today was 67 degrees with 90% uh, humidity, where last time we shot this was 86 degrees with 83% humidity. Temperature wasn't our factor. It came down to seating depth today. Both H1000 and Rotumbo were over pressure. There was no question about that. Heavy bolt lift on almost every single round. So I won't be loading any of these combos ever again, at least not in this seating depth. Before we changed seating depth, there was no pressure issue with these loadings. Now we'll go ahead and go through these targets one powder at a time. Starting here with H1000, 69 grains gave us a three group average of 2,929 feet per second, SD of 2.6, ES of 5.7, and a 0.52 inch group average. Good looking groups, nothing wrong with this load at all, but like I stated earlier, we were over pressure the entire time. So not gonna load this combo again. Last time we shot this loading, it gave us 2,922 feet per second in a 0.39 inch group. That's seven feet per second, what a difference that is right there, but it really has to do with that seating depth. On the Rotumbo, 70.6 grains gave us a three group average of 2,941 feet per second, SD of 6.5, ES of 14.7, and a 0.64 inch group average. Last time we shot Rotumbo, we got 2,921 feet per second and a 0.62 inch group. However, I had a shanked round in there. It should have been much smaller. Uh, the point is we gained 21 or 20 feet per second here. And we also picked up all that pressure. Once again, it was the change in seating depth that caused this. Won't be going back to this loading anyway, but it just demonstrates how much you gain in velocity with that little alteration, at least in that powder right there. Rounding it out with N570, it's my favorite. 71.9 grains, three group average of 2,965 feet per second, SD of 4.1, ES of 10, and a 0.5 inch group. This didn't shoot as well as I had hoped, but we're way faster than where we left off. The last time we shot this load, we had 2,938 feet per second. So here we've picked up 27 feet per second overall. The oddity of this is that when I shot those nine shots to follow the barrel before beginning to start the groups, the center group here was 71.3 grains of N570. And take a look at that group. I can't even remember what it measured, but it just doesn't matter. 
So that's where I'll be going as my go-to load at this seating depth. I'll be knocking it down to 71.3. And of course, there's going to have to be future testing to reevaluate that and make sure that's still where we're at. N570 wins the day. There's really no question about it. We're getting all the speed in the world and getting nice tidy groups, which I think we can sacrifice a few feet per second of speed and get it down to those tiny groups we had last time we shot these charge weights with the old seating depth. Anyhow, more to come in this series. The next video is going to be on the Hammer Hunter Tip 162 grain bullet. Haven't really decided on powders yet, but that's coming at you shortly. We will be circling back here to the Burger 195 grain with N570. I will kind of want to work up a final load in the event that that's the bullet we end up going with uh, for the moose hunt. So obviously there's at least a couple more in this series, and then we'll be moving on to other rifles, other calibers. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Hope to catch you in the next video, and until then, take care and shoot straight. That's the way she goes. <laughs>